Off we go. Hospital Porters Pride and Dignity stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panwo TV and today I'm in Glastonbury and Richard here's with me. Richard Hello. Wright. Hi hi. The camera. <laughs> give, Richard, give a few little bit of a 360 of the street here. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. This is the High Street in Glastonbury. This is my fourth trip to Glastonbury. If you'll remember, um, I came here in 2010 to the Glastonbury Symposium. I made a three-hour movie called Ben Goes on Tour. I'm not going to make this as long or as detailed as that one. If you want to know a lot about this town, link in the description box as per her Panwo TV tradition. Uh, but I'm just having a little walk down here and a few things have changed and I think I ought to point them out to you. First thing, we've got this lovely um, shop called Kashi, which is... Um, well, Richard, what is it? It's a kind of like a... It's a kind of cru crusty store. It's a hippie boutique. <laughs> I mean, there's like these, these little bags here. These beautiful bags with lovely patterns and a peace symbol and other things like that, and there's a rainbow coloured um, hoodie there, yeah, a little hoodie. Yeah. Everything yeah. that a self-respecting, well-dressed hippie needs, I think. So I'll certainly be popping in here and maybe picking up some nice new clothes. <laughs> and we carry on further down there, there's... I mean, my, my challenge in my life, in my normal life, is like not getting bogged down in the... in the... In the all, all the all the problems and mm. all the stress of life, you know. Even though I'm out of portering now, so my stress is a lot less. I've got money problems and things like that because I'm out of portering, etc., etc. Um, my challenge in Glastonbury is, is, is to actually keep my feet on the ground and not to get, not to mm. fly off in my head in the clouds. This is how the, how powerful the energy is here. And um, now things have changed since I was here last in 2010. Um, some of them good, some bad. I mean, some things are timeless because the thing about Glastonbury is it's, I think one of the reasons it maybe it's been preserved and, and it's become this haven for kind of like, um, what's the word, non-conformism and new age. Yeah, like new age. Yeah. yeah. It's because it is very inaccessible. It's quite remote. It's well, it took, it took me three days cycling to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, getting here by bike is one of the easier ways. There's no railway and there's no main roads here. Um, some strange things, you know, you notice some strange things if you're driving in here, actually. The last couple of miles seems to take a lot longer than it should, as if there's some kind of temporal spatial warp in this particular <laughs> area, anyway. Um, we carry on a bit down further down here. There's lots of, there's, there's lots of strange, you see, mm -hmm. this is a kind of um, a witch shop, you see, lots of goblins and there's, I think that's Gandalf and things like this and there's those witches and oh my, look at that oh wow easy he's, he's a member of the club isn't he i think he's been modeled on me <laughs> you wish <laughs> i don't know about you but my eyes are watering a bit i, I feel a bit inadequate all of a sudden yes yeah well i feel uh, that's got to be a fertility statue really isn't it <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot more to see down here this here i'll have a bit more to say about this later because that was here last time i came here but it wasn't the only thing sort of like um, non-conformist ethical organic supermarkets independently run on Glastonbury High Street but um, there was when I was when I was here last in 2010 you just just watch Ben goes on tour and you'll and you'll see all the details I I'm, I'm, I don't really wish to, I don't really want to repeat myself in this film the, the, material, I got, hello, <laughs> the material I covered in that film but um, basically you know I'm you know I'm, I'm um, I'm just going to go over, I mean, you can look at that video, it's almost three hours long, it's great fun, it's in the description box, I hope you like it, you know. Now this has changed because um, as, um, a stain's here with me, she doesn't want to be on camera as always, but she's here with me. This used to be like a kind of um, chemist's place, but now it's like wool. But this, this, this little shopping centre is still here. It's, you go down there, there's lots of other shops, and art, there's, there's, an art, there's an art gallery, it's called Over the Moon, look. Over the moon, I think it's a lovely name. And that's just that is just typical Glastonbury. Really. Come on a bit further down here. And uh, there's a hundred monkeys that's there. That's really good. And um, you get this name Avalon all the time. Avalon. It's it's a, there's this area called Avalon. Um, the Avalon thing is um it's kind of an informal kind of yeah, area. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of Kerry Cassidy when I hear the word Avalon. Project Avalon, yeah. Project Avalon. Because that comes from the Arthurian legends. Yeah. But it's, the Isle of Avalon was a real place. This area is called the Isle of Avalon because um, the, this area was actually surrounded by, at one point, it was a peninsula in the sea. <laughs> the sea used to come up much further um, until about um, sometime in the Middle Ages when it all changed. Now, if you look at Thomas Cook, that's the, that's the first corporate name I've seen in Glastonbury so far, Thomas Cook. 
Unfortunately, it's not the last, as you'll soon find out. Yeah, I think we've got uh, Barclays Bank across the street as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, you did you, did you have a nice journey though, Richard, up here? Uh, yeah, th three days uh, cycling, yeah. three days, two nights, camped out in the West Country, um, crop circle country, had a sky watch for two nights and didn't really see anything, but it was nice, it was a nice journey. Here's a good example of what I was talking about. Come here, please. Now, if you turn around here, you'll see yourself a cooperative Glastonbury, um, and it's basically it's the same as any other of these. Of course, co-op, Cooperative is a big chain. It's a big. Um, yeah, it's no different from Tesco's or Morrison's. It, it, it's not quite as bad as Tesco's, but the thing about it is, this until 2010, this was an independently run, um, non-conformist, ethical, organic supermarket, like most other businesses in this town, just like that one up there. And now it's it's been taken over, and unfortunately, it's still here. I was hoping when I came back, because last time I was here was three years ago. I was hoping when I was hoping when I came back that this would be gone and someone else would have bought it up and it would have gone back to its original form but unfortunately it has not but needless to say i i won't be shopping there i don't think anyway richard and i we come here for what we come in we come here for a conference don't yeah we, richard? Well, yeah it's called megalithomania megalithomania and, uh, that's yeah. a good name isn't it? yeah megalithomania yeah i think i think you can guess what it's going to be about uh, you've got an upside down one on your t-shirt there, uh, Ben. That's that, that would be deemed a megalith, Mega regardless megalith. of which way up it was held. Yeah, because um, well, well, we, it's an interesting kind of conference to do with sort of like alternative views on history and archaeology, the kind of Graham Hancock, Robert Beauval kind of thing. Yeah, and head, headline is Dr. Robert Schock, oh, who yes. um, he did the dating on the Sphinx, the erosion on the Sphinx, the water erosion, and he came to the conclusion it was about 17,000 years old so this is very interesting and I mean what, one, of, one of the theories about the Sphinx was it, it used to have a lion's face because it pointed towards the constellation of Leo yeah and uh, a pharaoh later came along and carved his face into it and this is just one of the theories yeah. kicking about although the face of the pharaoh it's supposed to be the pharaoh Khafren doesn't actually look anything like any of the other statues of Khafren which is very odd it's almost like a kind of Neanderthal face like rather than a modern human face and this is a very very interesting thing and I mean I'll tell you what I'll, hopefully I'll get an interview with a professor or doctor or whatever he's Robert Shock at some point I think he's just Dr Robert Shock he's, just doctor. he's not a professor like Professor Brian Cox oh no not he, Brian Cox if he's started calling people knobbers. Hey, he's, a, he's a gobshite, isn't he, Brian Cox? Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, well, thank you for watching Hapanmo TV. There'll be more to come very soon. Hospital Port is pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order.